police came to inspect the house after the head of the family was reported missing. They were met by the disappeared individual's wife and young daughter. The woman answered some but not all of the questions the law enforcement officers asked, and she also allowed them to talk to the girl. The family seemed indifferent and unnaturally calm. The cops were not necessarily surprised by the cold-blooded nature of the mother and the daughter. They had seen a lot of crime already, having seen the different behavior people exhibit, and so they tried to carry out their duties with an open mind. But in this case, the police noticed that the wife of the disappeared man was clearly hiding something. They expressed this to her and conducted a thorough questioning. Before I go on anymore, I'd like for you to guess the riddle behind another unique object. Its anomalous property is that the more you destroy, the more good you actually do. Which object is this? You cannot find it within the SCP archives. This specific anomalous property will manifest itself this December only in the game Mech Arena. This is a killer 5v5 mech shooter game with tons of awesome weapons, mechs and skins, as well as game mods and maps. You can destroy enemy mechs solo or with friends in multiplayer. Mechs are here. From December 3rd to the 5th, an awesome event was held at the Santa Monica Pier in Los Angeles, where Mech Arena fans had the opportunity to hang out with like-minded people. All those who were unable to make it to the event can, until December 15th, still destroy each other's mechs for the greater good. For 1 billion destroyed mechs, Mech Arena will donate $100,000 to persons with disabilities. All players who click the link or scan the QR code on the screen will receive 50,000 credits, 3 gold chests, and an exclusive Mechs Are Here event skin. Another 10 lucky individuals will randomly become the owners of legendary prize sets, among which there are both game bonuses such as access to the Stalker Mech and other merch to include a cool mech figurine, a coin, a sweater, an art book, and a brand-themed case. The most important thing, though, is that they'll receive an invitation to the Mech Arena Championship. These 10 individuals will split into two teams of five, and will compete against six teams made up of content makers in order to win the grand prize, piloting a real-life mech. In order to do this, US residents simply need to click on the Mechs Are Here button and get registered. So check out the link in the description, grab your bonuses, and start destroying mechs to your heart's desire. See you on the battlefield. Look out for me in-game under the username DVOID. While leaving, one of the law enforcement officers had either suggested or joked that maybe the woman herself killed her husband. She had, in fact, not done this, but she knew for sure that he was not alive. Three days earlier, the woman had found a small pile of crushed bones in a puddle of some strange, unknown substance in her husband's office. She immediately called her husband, but he did not answer. Around that same time, a colleague and family friend contacted the woman. It turned out that the man had not shown up to work. Hearing about the strange find from the alarmed wife, the friend headed over immediately. <laughs> Normally such events would frighten everyone, but not this family. The fact is that the missing man was working with anomalous objects. The wife was always afraid that one day some anomaly would cause his death, and so it did. The puddle found in the office turned out to be the remains of the disappeared man himself. In order to cover her tracks, the woman turned to the police with a statement about the disappearance, and the family friend promised to find out what happened to her husband. As a matter of fact, however, he knew all about it, because he himself had killed his colleague. He needed to get secret information that only the deceased possessed. Trying to obtain it by force was utterly useless, so the traitor opted for a trick instead. He planted a spy at his colleague's house. Who could have guessed that the spy would end up being a cute anomalous toy that the man had given to his friend's daughter in advance? After waiting for the right moments, having calculated everything down to the smallest detail, the villain poisoned his colleague. Then, the plush creature he had planted got down to business. SCP-4966 would make a nice pillow if it remained motionless. But when the pillow crawls out from under your head, then it's not so comfortable. However, this is not a toy at all, but actually an anomalous object. And as often happens in the world of SCP, nothing is ever as simple as it may appear. The object is classified as safe and is contained at Site-17. In any case, it was actually there already prior to some incident. The information about which is available only to Foundation personnel with a level 4 security clearance, and me of course. SCP-4966 appears to be a round pillow, or a sort of soft grey-coloured cloth toy. It has small black eyes and a mouth made with threads. There are no other marks or holes on the surface of the fabric. Despite its artificial appearance, the creature is alive. Or at the very least, it knows how to move and transform its body. Scientists still haven't found a way to study the tissue that makes up SCP-4966. 
Thus far, it's proven impossible to pierce, damage, or otherwise collect their acquired samples. For this exact reason, the internal structure of the object also remains unknown. Its skin tissue does not become translucent under x-rays and has not been the easiest to study by any other means of research. SCP-4966 mimics the behavior of the living things that interact with it. For example, it can imitate the process of eating food, but does not absorb food since it has no need of it. The same applies to other natural needs. The creature is also able to make sounds in some unknown way. When the object's in its neutral state, the sounds are not unlike a kitten's meow. Wow. Sociable SCP-4966 becomes withdrawn and nervous if not played with for a long time. Therefore, the staff necessarily devotes time to the object for communication purposes at least once every three weeks. The entity resides in an upholstered humanoid chamber. There are structures in the room for climbing, just like those for cats. SCP-4966 is allowed to have stuffed animals and various plastic items. The object was nicknamed Tabioka due to its appearance and behavior. Yes, the Foundation staff are absolute geniuses when it comes to thinking up nicknames. The name given to SCP-4966 is derived from the English word tabby, meaning short-legged and fat. While the ending, Oka, was given on account of its similarity to the little bubbles in the foamy tea with tapioca balls. As for tapioca's anomalous properties, this cute plush pillow devours corpses for some unknown reason. When a dead organism is near, the entity opens its mouth wide enough to engulf the entire body. The object then swallows it whole, expanding as much as needed. This mechanism is similar to feeding a python, but unlike the terrestrial reptile, SCP-4966 does not appear to have any limit to its expansion. On one occasion, it was given the carcass of the largest living organism on the planet, a blue whale, and it completely enveloped the latter in its gray matter. It's highly likely that if Tabioka was faced with an even larger corpse, it could absorb that too. During the stretching process, the outer skin of the object remains strong. Obviously, the Foundation tried to attach recording devices to the corpses, but this did nothing to help them learn more about the object. If its skin does not transmit radiation from the outside, then it can be logically assumed that this is impossible from the inside as well. Thus, a live broadcast makes no sense. Recording devices were also useless. Once SCP-4966 has completely enveloped a body, it will slowly begin to return to its original size. During this process, the object acquires the individual characteristics of the creature that it's digesting. At the same time, the body's stage of decomposition doesn't seem to matter all that much. Most of the time, Tabioka has the same limbs as the devoured creature, but he can also try on other characteristics. So, having swallowed a rattlesnake, the object lengthened its body by more than five feet, and then acquired a rattle, just like the snakes have. After experimenting with a lionfish carcass, SCP-4966 developed fins. Additionally, there was poison in their needles, similar to that of this species of fish. After swallowing an ostrich, Tabioka grew a long neck and featherless wings. He tried to fly by jumping off the furniture in his containment cell. When the object was offered a stuffed elk head, it enveloped it and acquired horns nearly five feet in length. These greatly interfered with its movement and balance. Another feature of such assimilations is that the object expels waste. It spews out crushed bones and other solids, such as the metal parts from a stuffed animal. It also spits out a puddle of liquid biological material. This process occurs approximately four hours after the digestion and physical transformation of the object. Scientists have conducted experiments not only with the corpses of living beings, but other things as well. Tabioka was offered dry leaves, but he preferred to play in them. The creature showed practically no reaction to shoes made of genuine leather. The object simply knocked over one boot and climbed into it. By now, you should have wondered whether or not experiments were carried out with human corpses, and what happens to the object in this case. You're on the right track. There were such experiments indeed. But this topic is obscured by some measures of secrecy. First, all experiments must be approved by a certain Dr. Bannock. And second, the data from tests with human bodies are available only to employees with at least a level 4 clearance. And so, I'll go ahead and tell you about them now. The object was first presented with the corpse of a D-Class female employee with no visible signs of decomposition. After being completely absorbed, the entity returned to its normal physical form without any external transformations. But suddenly it began to speak English in a human voice. The creature's speech was slightly incoherent, and its ability to construct sentences, or its lack thereof, corresponded to that of a child. SCP-4966 appears to have acquired the knowledge and memories of the woman it absorbed. Prior to her service with the Foundation, the employee worked with upholstered furniture. 
So after absorbing her corpse, Tabioka began to criticize the arrangement of his containment cell. According to the creature, the quality of the materials used was below the established standards for keeping pets. The object's ability to speak disappeared after it expelled the remains of the corpse. Testing has revealed that SCP-4966 retains the memories of all recycled humans. Shortly after this discovery, the Chaos Insurgency broke into Site-17. The attack was repelled and several members of the enemy organization were killed. One of them was found to have a damaged document containing data on Foundation objects, including information on SCP-4966. Researchers took advantage of Tabioka's anomalous properties and fed him the corpses of the slain Chaos Insurgency agents in the hope of gaining intelligence directly from their brains. The creature behaved like a capricious child and demanded cookies for information. But during the interview, it was established that a hostile related organization had implanted transmitters into the bodies of 14 D-Class personnel. Tracking chips were implanted in the cerebellum and had a mild anti-memetic effect on the people. So for them, the process of transmitting information seemed like a normal stream of thoughts. In exchange for cooperation, the object begged to be given the best upholstered furniture and additional treats. It remains unclear where SCP-4966 came from. It could have been specially created with the help of anomalous objects, or it is in fact an entity from another universe. Either way, it's obvious that its properties are aimed at preserving the knowledge of deceased beings. As it turns out, it's practically a walking library. But is it possible to somehow obtain all this information from it? That's another question entirely. What are your thoughts regarding the origin of SCP-4966? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to leave a like!